Hey guys, this is Kirov speaking and today I'm going to do a little let's play and considering that we do have the Le Mans body in the game right now, I have downloaded a custom track from the forums that is the track that was used in the 1987 Le Mans race. Also, um, I think I'll be designing this car in 1987 and compare the results to uh, real life, what it turned out. So I, I noted a few rules and stuff. So we are going to design this car now and see what comes out of it. All right, this seems to be the starting point. I've uh, set the year to 1987, called the car the Killerob Engineering 87. And uh, now let's take a look at what we can do here. First of all, I would say that uh, this is a mid-engine car and we would like to have a bit better weight distribution if possible. So I will try to shorten the back here a bit, uh, slope it up because it looks cool and then make the front a bit longer. Not too much though, be good. Uh, the wheel arches will be um, looked at a bit later. Once we have the suspension in, we can tell how large wheels fit in there. But I don't think we will have any troubles whatsoever fitting uh, pretty nice big wheels in there. A uh, monocoque chassis, of course. Oh, we do have carbon fiber in, in that day and age. Uh, that's pretty cool. So we are going to go for that, I would think. Uh, we do have, I think, a weight limit of 800 kilograms. Uh, it is not allowed to be lighter than that for the race series, for the C-Class. And... Let's go for double wishbone. If we go for polymer body, body that would be interesting. But I think those were more like no, no, they use polymer. I think some kind of fiber, fiber stuff, polymer maybe. I think we are done here. So what I considered is we need lots of cooling. I'm. I think I should go for a turbocharged engine because that was really the. The thing of the day, you had like a 3.2 liter engine and it would make like 800 horsepower or something like that. It's, it's crazy shit. I'm not quite sure which color to pick though, although black looks professional. I think the, both the green and the blue, Killerob Engineering Blue does look really fancy. I think I'm going with this one, looking good. Also, rear wheel drive as we don't want to have any drivetrain losses on this long straight, we definitely want to have all the power we can get. So, let's go into it. The engine is definitely the tricky part of it all, I would say. Hmm. We want to be going for a pretty small displacement. They seem to be around like three and a half liters, their maximum. I think uh, the winning Porsche engine did have a 3.2 liter engine back then. So let's let's just say we try to compete with them and uh, also go for 3.2 liters. But instead of a flat six doing that, we are going for a V8. Uh, the flat six definitely had at least two turbochargers as well. <laughs> All right, uh, then dual of head cam. We go for the fancy stuff here. Um, also, I think I'll be aiming for at least plus five quality on more or less everything as that would be sensible for such a race car, if not a bit on the low side even. Definitely I-beam steel as we want to rev high and forged here. Uh, upping this up to 5. Compression, well, turbocharged and it's 80s turbo tech, so uh, I better not expect any wonders from this. Then cam profile 55. Turbocharged engines don't really like to to have that high cam profile, so 60 were maybe maybe okay too. Um, the heads definitely need lower friction and stuff though. Turbocharger! Let's see what we have here. Whoops, alright, that's starting well. Okay, I, I think we might not quite be breaking the 400 kilometers an hour with a 52 horsepower. Um, slight change. Let's see. Bam! There we go. Oh, this is looking so bad. Oh my god, that's such a shit. Okay. There. There, there. With this engine, we're not getting anywhere with these 3.2 liters. Uh, the... We would definitely need a quad turbo on this one to make the uh, needed power. And we don't have that. 
and no matter of tweaking can get us there and 580 horsepower is definitely not enough so what i'm going to do is to make the engine a bit larger and how about uh, trying yeah not quite that big maybe four liters And now it has come to this, uh, 842 horsepower at 7.5. Now I've completed the qualifying version engine, uh, and actually it's only 3.7 liters, but I managed to squeeze out some 850 horsepower anyway, which sounds pretty good. Uh, but if you look at the fuel mixture and ignition timing, you see what I've done there, and that is not a setting we would like to run for race. So what we're going to do now is clone this one and then we are going to detune it. And this should do. And the race trim now has a more reasonable fuel mixture, still very rich, but uh, it's only running 1.7 bar instead of 2 bar pre uh, pressure, boost pressure, and I've reduced the ignition timing back down. And that change should be really easy to do on the fly for, for our racing team. So just two settings of a knob there, I would say. Um, and up the MLM down a bit so that we gain back a bit of the reliability we need. No need to hammer the valve floating at the rev limiter. So uh, let's see, we are done with this engine. Let's have a run through it. Yes, that is kind of a beast. Let's see how it fits into the car. Alright, so now it's all in there. And yes, I think we are going to do a two-gear automatic gearbox for this car. That's the perfect fit. Uh, probably a five-gear manual. Uh, did they use five gears back then in race cars? I would have assumed they had a bit more than that already. Anyway, um, let's see, the torque curve definitely is not nice, so the gears need to be really tight up there, otherwise it's dropping down in power immensely back there. It is not good, so, yeah, first gear to 100, I, I guess that's more or less needed, uh, geared diff, and only 274 kilometers an hour? That seems a bit on the weak side. We want to do 400, not 274. Uh-oh, I see us losing badly. Uh, let's see how this goes. With the wheels, I think we are still a bit limited there regarding the rim size, which is hurting our braking capacity, I would say. It might be a bit uh, tough at the end of the straight getting down there without the brakes exploding. Uh, but we fitted 15 inch rims and 395s in the rear. Well, I think we need them to put the power down properly, but uh, yeah, 325s in the front may even be a bit large. Let's see. We have only vented discs with three pistons, and I think I'm going to need all of that in order to stop the car from any kind of speed. So, uh, 300 millimeter. Um, disc size and very aggressive pads to get the brake force up and then on the rear the same thing same size but a much more tame setting for the brakes then we have the aerodynamics and the car was so slow because um, well both the lip and the wing were at 50 here uh, not fully clad but on, on under tray uh, none and we had a huge airflow capacity of 1782 and we don't need all that so if we just leave it as this that should be good we do maybe want some brake cooling i will be taking a look into that uh, quality eight uh, that should definitely be a bit higher than the plus five we see elsewhere 
And now interior, ah, that's easy. Uh, very basic, it's basically stripped. And no quality in there, which makes it even lighter. 17, yes, there's nothing in there. There's one seat. That's, that's to simulate there's only one seat. Let's, let's say that. Entertainment, uh, I don't think you would be watching a movie at the same time. So, or uh, playing a cassette, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're learning Spanish at the same time, who knows? Uh, then uh, power steering, no. Uh, Anti-lock braking system. Did they have that? Uh, kind of doubt it. Maybe. I don't know. Traction control was probably forbidden. So let's not put any driver assist in there. And uh, no quality needed then. And regarding safety, uh, we put some basic stuff in. Should be good. Then um, springs. There's nothing fancy in there. What is there? Like air springs? I doubt it. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, gas monotube. A bit more advanced there. And then we go for race. Um, the ride height for this body is still a bit off, I would say. But, um, probably needs to be 10 centimeters lower than indicated. Uh, what more can we do here? This was the race setup, but yeah. Okay. More quality. We tune it later. And <laughs> oh shit! We have a drivability of 9.9! <laughs> That's perfect. Such quality, and we are much too heavy. And then we definitely want to get the uh, rear to grip a bit more. So, what we do is get more negative camber in the rear, and there we go. And drivability 12! Amazing! Oh yeah, my god. I don't think this one accelerates really quickly to 100. 4.7, okay, that's better than 6.5. Thank you for that. 4.4, 3.7, 3 3.5. But look at this graph, my god, what is this? At least the brakes seem to be working nicely. Uh, we can get a bit more drivability by dropping this one down. Oh yeah, let's make them really tame. Perfect. Yes. Best race car ever. The smoothest braking in a race car ever. Only 320 kilometers an hour. How slow is this thing? Damn it. Um, yeah. This this turbo engine might not have been the best idea. Maybe it's just impossible to cool this thing. A first lap with this one on the track. The final stats are uh, not too promising. The weight isn't too promising, and yeah, production units, it's, it's reasonably cheap for, for such a car. Now, first to get a ballpark estimate of how fast this thing really is, we test it from this way. And then it falls. <laughs> okay, never get below 18 kilometers on this car. Really slow. Uh, the cornering is pretty good, though. Hmm. Okay, let's try. Uh, let's test it on the proper track. So this one, for instance. And uh, I think that might be a four-minute run. <laughs> it would be embarrassing. It would be so embarrassing. This is... <laughs> yes, okay. The four minutes were a reasonable estimate there, I guess. Um, let me just tell you that the uh, qualifying time um, on this track was 3.21.90. That was pole position back then. Ah, uh, there's more work to do, it seems. Hmm, how can we make this thing faster? So now I've created the qualifying car and the race car. 
And the qualifying one I can push, like, if, if I reduce cooling to an absolute minimum uh, that keeps the car running, I can eke out uh, 360 kilometers an hour, but I, I don't think that is enough, really. <laughs> This is the story of the 1987 Le Mans debut of Kilrob Engineering. It never came to be. After seeing what times they run there, they just cancelled the event and never were to be seen again. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed guys, see you next time, bye.